hi and uh welcome to another video so um before we start you know the usual my name is jeffrey and you are welcome to wait is this thing on hold on one second yeah yeah it's you know there, there are times where <laughs> i use direct camera to record so there are times when uh, i could be sitting here and i could have spoken for about two or three minutes and then i'd be like let me let me just poke my head and check and only to realize that it wasn't recorded at all so sorry about that um i want to talk about like smartphone ram today and when i say ram i don't mean the guy that head boss people when he's pissed off i'm talking about like random access memory so there was this thing that happened last year or was it two years ago when there was a student i know who uh, approached me and he was like uh sir yes um i have like uh, i i need to buy a phone because i was i was teaching at the time and at a college community college and he was like um i have these two phones to buy and which one do you think would be good for me and i looked at both phones and looked at both processors and i was like one of them had a helio g uh 35 with 3 gig ram and the other one had like a, a mediatek 67 but it had four gigs of ram and i was like go with the 3 gig ram device and he was like no it's the 4 gig ram device the 4 gig ram device would be better and I think that's that kind of like echoes the sentiment that a lot of people have when it comes to RAM. So which do you think is better? The device with the bigger RAM or the device with the smaller RAM? Let's get into the video straight away. All right, so let's go. First off, let's define RAM. What is RAM? RAM is short for random access memory. So RAM is simply a type of memory module that sits in between the internal storage and the SOC, CPU cores rather, but the CPU cores inside the SOC. So RAM is basically like a very, very high, fast, eh? it's a high speed memory basically. It's a high speed memory that sits very close to the CPU cores and it acts as like a, a workbench, a work table for the CPU to be able to carry out, you know, like app processing and stuff. So that's what the RAM is. RAM is not the guy that, you know, with curly horns that nuts people for <laughs> for bragging rights and stuff all right now for those who saw like the previous video i think i did uh, i did show some light on what the ram does in the uh the larger scheme of things in a smartphone or cpu or, or soc function but i'm still going to like come back to that in this video right now so like i said earlier the ram acts as a workbench you know for the cpu cause to carry out their task because when the cpu fetches data from internal memory it cannot always keep going back to like fetch up data uh from the internal storage because internal storage is not as fast as the uh, CPU core so the CPU needs a much faster memory that is much closer to itself where it can you know like spread out the data and like okay I'm working I take this I can do my work I process it I come back and I pick this like data that is presented to the CPU cores to work with that is very fast and that's nearby and the RAM does that so the RAM acts as a sort of workbench for the um, CPU cost to work with. Uh, so every app that needs to run is loaded into the RAM before it can function. If by any chance an app is kicked out of RAM, it's probably not going to work anymore unless you have to like, you know, reboot the app again before the app's not going to get loaded into RAM and all that. Uh, in fact, for your smartphone to boot up, your operating system must be loaded into the RAM. It's very, very important that it is loaded into the RAM. It's, it's why sometimes when you check, when you check your RAM, for example, when you like scroll down and you want to see available RAM, you may have six gigs of RAM, for example, but you only find 3.5 gig available. At if you're lucky, uh, four gig RAM maybe. If you're not lucky, you could see two gig RAM or so. And you're like, hey, I don't have any app open. What's eating up my RAM space? Well, your operating system is there, as well as like other like important processes that run. For example, like your um, what's it called now? Your light sensor, that's your ambient light sensor. It's always working, and it has to be in the RAM. Fingerprint sensor. In fact, there are times that your operating system preloads apps you've not loaded the app yet but your operating system is like you know what he uses facebook a lot let me just preload it in here and just like keep it so that once he taps facebook it's already here in the ram running so it just opens up so that's like kind of like it's some of the software tricks that you know developers do that it makes it seem as if a phone is very fast like no it's not very fast your operating system just knows how to predict you the user and then like push the needed apps that you need just like preload them and keep them in the RAM there. So that's why sometimes you check and you never really see, like, you know, you have six gig RAM and you don't have any apps open. Surely you should have at least five gig left for you to use. It's not always like that. Key specs. Let's look at the key specs of RAM. Now, 
there are four key specs uh, for every smart every every smartphone RAM. Actually, you've got um, off the top of my head types. You've got types of RAM. You've got um, RAM speed. You've got channels, and then you've got size. So these are like the four key specs: type, channels, speed, size. Now the size is the most overrated spec of RAM. Like size is just so overrated. Like in the earlier story I told. Now I'm going to answer it at the end of this video. So just hold on a bit. I just want to talk about all of it. Now most people talk about size of RAM. Like I have had my phone in a public space where I, I had the phone on. I had it on this stand. Like I had it on this on this, and I had the keyboard on my lap. So I just had it like it was on top of a desk, and I was trying to finish. I was trying to finish a blog post. And like somebody walked up to me and was like, hi, and I was like, hello. And they was like, wow, this is your phone. It's impressive. You're actually typing on it. And I was like, yes, I'm actually typing on it. This phone must be very powerful. How many gig RAM? I said six. The person was like, oh, wow, ah, this phone must be very powerful. I, I, was, I was starting to think, where would I start to tell this person now that CPU power has nothing to do with RAM? And quite unfortunately, there are lots of people like the aforementioned person in the story and so that's the other guy and the person who walked up to me who, who believes strongly that RAM is what could know that the size of RAM is like you know it's is is proportional to CPU power CPU prowess and I don't know whoever put that idea into the minds of the general public but so far so good it is still being perpetrated I see companies come outside and they want to like talk about their their, their, their CPUs like the, the SOCs that they put on a certain phone and they will tell you that a certain clock speed and certain gigs of RAM and you know, therefore they usually put a big number out four gig four gigs of RAM for example uh, whereas the, the the SOC underneath is very mediocre on the statement I don't even know what to talk about it so uh, let's look at RAM types now basically RAM is this, this type of RAM we use on most computers in the world today currently is DDR RAM that's double uh, double data rate uh, RAM that can act, that's able to accept and process like two instructions at the same time but smartphones uh, do not require a lot of power to run so therefore they use a low power DDR RAM so the type of RAM that you find on smartphones are called LPDDR RAM so there are different types of LPDDR RAM the newer the better the faster so you've got LPDDR2, DDR, LPDDR3, LPDDR4, LPDDR4X and LPDDR5 that's what like the bleeding edge of tech now that's at four yeah, flagships but we can find 4X on upper mid ranges and mid ranges in general uh, for lower mid ranges and probably budget um, budget phones budget processors budget SOCs rather and then you can find LPDDR3 on the entry level or on really really old phones so I have seen where companies would put like um, older LPDDR3 or even LPDDR4 on their phone and you know, slap a heavy size of RAM on it and then tell people like this phone is fast and then people see the huge RAM and then they don't realize that the RAM type underneath it's an old slow sluggish RAM so uh, that's what type let's look at um, channels now uh, channels when you talk about channels now channels refer to how many physical connections or physical wires connect the um, the RAM itself now to the SOC or to the CPU cores so the more channels the better so I have if you have for example a single channel that is for example let's say a single channel that transmits data at 32 bits per second right think of it like there's only one road connecting two towns it's always going to be like a hold up on the highway especially if it's the only highway then I imagine that there's, there's like two highways or two different roads like connecting to different like connecting both towns now so you're going to see that it if this road is blocked people can simply like go this way in fact if there's less if there's traffic on this road and people choose to pass the other road there's not going to be traffic on this side anymore so that you have like dual roads now so that's why you see that uh, a, a, a RAM with dual channels is always going to be better than a RAM with a single channel. A RAM with four channels is always going to be better than RAM with two channels or one channel connection to the um, SOC or to the CPU cores. Then the next you have RAM speed, so that's how fast uh, the CPU can read data on the RAM and how fast it can also write to it as well as copy data from it. So that's like for that. Um, the RAM type, channels and speed are a lot more important than the fourth spec which is RAM size. RAM size is overrated overrated it's it's in fact 
you should, that's the last thing you should be looking at. If you see your phone has a certain type of RAM, you should go and look at the type, you can look at how many channels, and you should go and look at the speed. I think there are lots of great websites out there where you can find such information. I think Nano Review is usually my go-to for a kind of like RAM information concerning SOCs. But you can also check like other sites like Kimoview. Uh, I think they've also got like some really really good like you know, spec details on phones for for that one. So the last one is size. RAM size is measured in gigs, right? But it's not really something I would look to personally. If you if okay, let, let me just answer the question from the beginning, right? So uh, there was phone A which used which uses a Helio G35 with three gigs of RAM, and there was phone B which used a MediaTek 6739 with four gigs of RAM. Now, comparing the CPUs underneath is the first thing you should be looking for. The CPUs underneath are like no way in any way, like terms of performance, like the G35 dwarfs the uh, 6739 terms of performance one. The G35 is newer and so it uses an LPDDR4X RAM. The 6737, uh, 6739 is older and uses LPDDR3 RAM. It's got to be three, although I'm, I'm going to check that and then when I'm editing, I may make corrections, but I, I strongly believe off the top of my head. I'm not using any script, this is just me. It's, it's LPDDR3. Now with that being said, the size doesn't matter because you're going to have like a bottleneck, right? Because there's so much space on the RAM, but it's like for data to get in from the side into the space on the RAM to get in, it's going to be like really slow because of the LPDDR3 type, as well as the channels. It only has a single channel. So I think these are the things that you should be looking for in the smartphone. Don't worry yourself about size. Size when it comes to, yes, I know size is important, but nowadays smartphones have virtual memory for swapping, which is a future topic I hope to talk about probably soon, right? Soon. But RAM, it's, you know, the size of the RAM is important because yeah, that will determine how much multitasking does it determine how many apps you are going to be able to open that can be saved into you know, the RAM. Because the more space you have, the more apps you can keep in it. The less space you have, the less space you have to multitask. But I would rather have a small RAM size with a v that is fast and that is very efficient, that you know, very snappy for my CPU performance, than to have a large RAM that is old, that has only one channel that you know cannot basically transmit data to and fro from the CPU. Make it, uh, it will cause the phone to start, it will cause the phone to lag, it will cause the phone to stutter, and it will cause your know, apps to just freeze, even when there's nothing wrong with the phone. You think, oh, my phone is freezing. No, it's the app that is freezing because there is a, uh, there's lag, obviously. The CPU is just sitting down there and it's waiting for the RAM to send the data and it's like, are you done yet? And the RAM is like, oh, hold on one second, I am coming. I'm pushing this data in now. And then you see the CPU is just idling away, idling away, and the user will be like, you know, walk walk this thing and like it's it's stuck you get so um that is that um i hope you and uh, i think that's basically elementary stuff for ram i hope you enjoyed this video i already made a post about ram i'm going to like leave it in the description it's on, it's on my blog anyway so at least you can still after this video you can still go and check it out um once more please 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 i'm not asking for much i'm not just give me a hbo special here people you're the hbo specialist the HBO specialist, I help a brother out special, right? You know, like, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Okay, if you, even if you're not going to subscribe, but you found this video helpful, please leave a like. That's very, very important to me. Like I said, my target for the year is a thousand subscribers. I think I can do it. And you're central to that. Please help me. Uh, my name is Jeffrey once more, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.